New Year and welcome to our first service of 2023. Today, we have cause for double celebration. The 1st of January has fallen on a Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Another cause for celebration is that in our service today, we are uniting in worship with the congregation of Moniki and Newbigging and Murrows and Teeling. The new year brings new opportunities as we move forward together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Psalm 100 is entitled, A Hymn of Praise. These are the words. Sing to the Lord, all the world. Worship the Lord with joy. Come before him with happy songs. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we belong to him. We are his people. We are his flock. Enter the gates with thanksgiving. Go into its courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise him. The Lord is good. His love is eternal and his faithfulness lasts forever. With the words of the psalm resonating in our hearts, let us sing our first hymn, Joy to the World, in CH4, hymn 320, Joy to the World. <laughs> to the world. The Lord is come. He rules the world with truth and grace. With thankful hearts, we come before him now in prayer. Let us pray. Loving Father, on this first day of 2023, we are meeting together in the belief that, as the psalm says, one day spent in your temple is better than a thousand anywhere else. New Year's resolutions made with good intention may fall by the wayside after a few weeks, but we who trust in you have the spiritual hope and expectation of answered prayer. You never break your promise to those who love you. We are able to give thanks for your constant love only because you loved us first. In union with you, use us as lights shining for you 
so that our faith may be shown in actions which are pleasing to you. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light along our path. As our congregation journeys together, we have the firm assurance of being on solid ground with you, our Saviour, directing the path we should take. As we offer ourselves to you, strengthen us to obey your will, safe in the knowledge that your mercies are new every morning. Abba, our Father, in your merciful grace, you gift to us love, joy, peace, hope, and the light of life. As you guide us in your way, we thank you with grateful hearts for listening to and hearing our prayers. Amen. lesson this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 2 verses 13 to 23 the escape to Egypt after the wise men were gone an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream get up flee to Egypt with the child and his mother the angel said stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him that night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. The return to Nazareth. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son, Archelaus, he was afraid to go there. Then, after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee, so the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophets had said, he will be called a Nazarene. Amen. Well, good morning and Happy New Year. Many of you may be aware that Mary and Joseph went on a journey this Advent and they went into various people's homes and shared hospitality and people were able to meet each other as they handed over Mary and Joseph. Now this happened in Monofeith and in Maniki and Newbiggin and Murrows and Teeling. They arrived in time for Christmas at the church here and it's great that we can celebrate their arrival all together today. So take a moment and watch their journey, the various homes they'd been to on their way here.
hearts with one state. The Gospel of Matthew tells us the story of Mary and Joseph, and it's a story of journeys. It's a story of Mary. And it's a story of Joseph. It's a story of unplanned pregnancy, of fear, of disgrace at the time, of support. It's a journey when God came so close that they knew they were not alone. It's a journey which took Mary and Joseph to the point, the moment when love was born. It's a journey which brought strange visitors and expensive gifts from the East. It's a journey when God came so close that they knew they weren't alone. But that wasn't the end of the journey. That was the beginning. Because the king wanted to kill the child. So Mary and Joseph had to flee to Egypt with the child. And God came so close to them that they knew they weren't alone. That wasn't the end of the journey. It was a beginning. Because when the king died, Joseph and Mary, with the child, tried to go back to Bethlehem. But the king's son ruled there now. So again, in a time of fear, God came so close to them that they knew they weren't alone. And another beginning started as Mary and Joseph and the child moved to Nazareth in Galilee. And God came so close that they knew they weren't alone. And the child grew up to know the history of his people, to know the situation of those around him, and to show others that God comes so close that they could know they were never alone. I wonder where the world is in this story. I wonder where you are in this story. Because all our stories are made up of journeys. Sometimes our journeys may seem like endings. when there can be new beginnings. And no matter what those endings and beginnings can feel like, God comes so close to us that we can know we are never alone.
let's stay seated as we sing our next hymn, Spirit of the Living God. Our second reading is from Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 8, reading from the Message Bible. Here Paul advises us to focus on our ability to rejoice in our fellowship with Christ. Celebrate God all day, every day. I mean, revel in him. Make it as clear as you can to all you meet that you're on their side, working with them and not against them. Help them see that the master is about to arrive. He could show up any minute. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayers, letting God know your concerns. Before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness, everything coming together for good, will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. Summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, the beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise not things to curse. Good morning. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Lynn Podger, and I'm a member of Maniki, New Biggin, Murrows, and Teelin Church. And it's lovely to be here with you all this morning. And I hope you all had a good Christmas, and I hope we will all have a wonderful new year. New Year, we usually associate New Year with new beginnings, new, re new Year resolutions, which I am not doing this year, new journeys. Listening to Trudy, I was reminded that all of us, like Mary and Joseph, are really on a journey. In fact, there must be lots of journeys happening all around the world. And we're just part of that wonderful experience. 
And these journeys were happening back in Mary and Joseph's time, and they're happening now here with us. Some journeys do not turn out as we expected. For example, when I married Tim, I did not think the first third of my marriage would be spent living abroad. Nor did I think that, like Mary, I would give birth in a strange land, no support network around me, and immediately have what was known as the serious police come and visit me, telling me I was harboring an illegal immigrant. Quite scary, the serious police. But thankfully, I had wonderful neighbours who rallied round and came to my support. As a church, we are continuing on a new journey that began with the Radical Action Plan. And for Maniki New Biggin, Murrows and Teeling, and Monifees Parish Church, this is leading us in a new journey together as a union. But what is a union? At the moment, we're hearing an awful lot about unions because of the continuing strike effect, sorry, the continuing strike action that's happening around us. And I think because of this, unions can be seen negatively, but unions do a lot of good too. As a teacher, I was in a union. It was the National Union of Teachers, which is not, which seems to sum it up quite well, actually. But I was in that mainly for the legal protection it offered me. Unions were created to protect workers <coughs> sorry, and their interests. And sometimes we may think unions go too far, and I'm not here to debate that. But unions began as a body that helps and supports and looks after its members. And that reminded me of the early church. We read in Acts 2 that fellow Christians shared everything they had. They sold things they had so that nobody would be in need. In a way, a union. A group coming together to help and support each other. Following on from this, a union is much like the church. Both have a broad range of members. And in such a group, there is bound to be differing views, disagreements, fallouts, moments of great joy and even sadness. But both unions and the church are there for their members and are concerned for their welfare. We're away to enter into a union a new journey for both our congregations may be easy, it may be difficult. We are bound, I think, to hit some bumps along the way. But we do have one thing going for us. We are Christians and never ever underestimate the power of God to work through Christians, to work through us. We should be able to discuss any ideas, grievances, thoughts, concerns, and reach an outcome, especially if we allowed ourselves to be guided by the Holy Spirit. We start journeys, and they may end in a totally different way to what we've expected. This has happened to me a couple of times in my life, most recently this past year. Looking back, in hindsight, it's been for the best. I didn't necessarily think so at the time, and I probably put up one heck of a fight as I was on that journey saying, I don't think this is right. But I'm here, and in hindsight, I can see it was for the best. God always knows better. So, as we embark on this new journey together, I can only see positives. 
We have so many good things and exciting things. So many good and exciting things we can share and do together. Together, we have a vast resource of knowledge, talent, and time. This union could be so good, not only for us, but more importantly for the people we should be serving as representatives of Christ on earth. As we see in Philippians 2, Timothy, Epaphroditus, and Paul are great friends. Not only are they great friends, they enjoy each other's company, and they each have a unique gift they've been given, and that gift is their contribution to making and building the church where they were at that time. I really hope and pray that we can do that too. Just think, and I have been in a church where this has happened before, it was in Belgium a long time ago, but our church could be bursting from the seams because of God working in and through us to the glory of God. And isn't that what we all want? We're now going to sing our next hymn, which is One More Step Along the World I Go.
was involved in farming. But you might say, ministry is dependent on God. And just like the weather, God's actions are not entirely predictable by us humans. So how come you're attracted to people ministry, but not animal husbandry? All I can say to that is that it comes from within. This is a blessing. It's not always plain sailing, but I would not.
they never tire of hearing. Something new. A union of our two congregations. People with whom we could become friends. A fresh perspective on our favorite Bible stories told in a different way. Something borrowed. Community halls, sometimes used as our place of worship. Ideas from other branches of the church. Traditions familiar to one or other of our congregations. Something blue. The sky, beautiful, like the first morning. Mary's dress, as children reenacted the story of our Saviour's birth. The feelings of the disciples before they met the Lord on the Emmaus Road. All these things, dear God, are to be treasured, and we thank you for them. We don't know exactly what lies ahead of us this year. And so we pray, make us like a couple on their wedding day who believe that there are no hurdles they cannot overcome because they will be tackling them together, bound together by love. As scripture says, there is nothing love not face. There is no limit to its faith, its hope, its endurance. We give thanks for those who have shown us the truth of this. Friends and family, as well as people featured in the media. There is indeed much to celebrate, but also much to make us so we pray for food for the hungry, shelter for those who are on the streets or escaping violence, understanding for the ones who have been abused, generosity for families and individuals struggling to make ends meet. loving care for those who are ill or frail in body or mind. Comfort for those who are grieving. Responsible stewardship of our fund and sharing of its resources. Wisdom for the leaders of nations. this new year, dear God, we place ourselves in your hands. Accept what we have to bring to you today, ourselves and our gifts of money, and make us a blessing in the church and in the world for Jesus' sake. I have a few intimations today. Things are starting up again, evidently. Well, they're not actually. There's not much happening here this week except the community play date, which will be here on Wednesday morning. But this afternoon at 2 p.m. in Maniki Park, there will be a walk. So bring your raincoats and let's enjoy some fresh air and fellowship together at Maniki Park at 2. I have quite a few cards that have been given here. I'm not going to read them all out. There's a couple over there which are Christmas cards in one of the windows that's addressed to everybody. Um, we have, but just to mention them, we have one from the Breast Buddies thanking for support. We've had a baptism here a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, and we Ivy's family have written to thank us 
for welcoming refreshments. And I have a card here from Fee and Scott as well. So if you haven't seen that yet, do come and read that as well. I think that's all the intimations. Have I forgotten any? <laughs> no? <laughs> we shall sing again our final hymn. No, we won't. We'll take our offering up and we'll stay seated as we sing our doxology. <laughs>
there's, I forgot to announce there's tea and coffee up in the Rattray Hall. I hope you can stay and enjoy some fellowship together. <laughs>